Hi, welcome back. As we continue our exploration of tissues, we are done with connected tissues, so we are moving on. So just take a minute to review. How many types of tissue were they? What are the names of the four types? The first type was connective tissue. What was connective tissue made out of? What are the different seven different types of connective tissue we learned about how do you tell them apart when you're solid in that material then move on to muscle tissue muscle tissue looks totally different because it has a different function it is specialized so that it will contract or shorten when it gets the proper stimulation so the first thing when we're talking about muscle is we have to decide, is it voluntary or involuntary? What does this mean? It means, can I move it if I want? So for instance, can I move my arm muscles, my forearm muscles? Can I flex my elbow, contract my biceps? Yep. So that muscle is going to be voluntary. Okay. If I couldn't do it, it would be voluntary. So we have three different types of muscle tissue. The first type is the type you're all aware of, and this is called skeletal muscle because it's the type of muscle that's attached to the skeleton. So when the muscle contracts or gets shorter, it's gonna pull one bone closer to another bone known as a movement, okay? Like in your biceps brachii. That was skeletal muscle. As we said, it's already voluntary, okay? The next type of muscle I want to talk about is smooth muscle. And so smooth muscle is what is in the walls of all of your hollow organs except your heart. So like in the wall of your stomach, the wall of your intestines, the wall of your breathing tubes, ladies, the wall of your uterus. So here's what I want you to do, ladies. At the count of three, I want you to really concentrate and see if you can get that uterine smooth muscle to contract, you know, those cramps that you get every month that you're just look forward to. Let's see if we can make that happen. One, two, three, go. Were you able to do it? Anybody have a cramp going on that they didn't have 10 seconds ago? No. Okay. So would smooth muscle then be voluntary or involuntary? All right. Gentlemen, so you don't feel left out, we're going to talk cardiac muscle just for you. So cardiac muscle is only found one place, and that is the heart. So this is the only hollow organ that does not have smooth muscle. It has cardiac muscle. So gentlemen, for you, let's see if you can make your heart stop contracting. Ready? One, two, three, go. Relax that muscle. Did your heart quit beating? No. So is it voluntary or involuntary? Awesome. So do you see how I want you to think and not just rely on me to give you facts that you're then going to memorize, but I want you to understand concepts. So when we are done talking about muscle, you should be able to come back and fill this out from your understanding. What I do not want you to do is to sit here and fill it out as you're listening to me talk because that is not helping your learning at all. Okay, that is just regurgitating something else. You're not doing any thinking whatsoever. It's not gonna help your learning. You're not gonna know it on any quiz or any test. So you're gonna write in the three muscle types, hint, they're right here. Then you're gonna tell what type of movement, hint, you've got two choices. As we go along, I'll be talking about what the structure of the three types look like, what the speed is, and what, we've already done location, so you could already do that. And But wait until we're completely done, listen to this whole thing, do your studying, and only when you are sure and you're confident in your studying, go back and see if you can fill this out. And then use the class notes to double check your work to see if you are correct. All right. Let's talk about skeletal muscle first. So when we look at skeletal muscle, you notice that these are long cells which have what? Stripes. Do you see the stripes? Stripes, okay, officially called striations, but they're stripes. If this was black and white, it would look like a zebra. Okay. 
And notice where the nucleus is, it's pushed off to the side and that's because these stripes represent proteins which are going to contract. And the cell is so full of these proteins because that's its job, that it pushes the organelles off to the side. You see how this doesn't look at all like that typical cell you learned about at the beginning? All right. So as we talked about, this was voluntary contraction. These long cells can require more than one nucleus for the cell. We'll talk more about that when we come back, when we talk about the muscular system. And of the three types of muscle, this has the fastest contraction, but it's very short-lived. If you think about in the Olympics, they have that clean and jerk where they're lifting the super heavy weights. How long do they have to hold that? Two seconds. All right. The next type is cardiac muscle. Cardiac muscle, when you look at it, do you see how it's long as well? But you're going, wait a second, I see spaces here that I didn't see here. And that's because cardiac muscle has branches. You can see that this cell has branches, but it's striated. Do you see the stripes? You can see the stripes here now that I pointed them out to you as well, but you can clearly see the stripes here. Uh, usually only has one nucleus, uh, but it can have two. But we have these specialized connections between the cells. Do you see those dark purple lines here? Well, we've got them here as well. Now that I point them out, it makes them real easy to see, doesn't it? Okay. And these are specialized connections between cells so that things can flow back and forth between adjacent cells, which means you should know what those specialized connections are. Okay, because we've already talked about intercellular junctions. Um, they have a special name in cardiac muscle because we have hundreds of them in one location called the intercalated disc. You don't have to know that term yet, but you will when we come back into cardiovascular system. Compared to the three types of muscle, this one is quick and short contracted. The normal heart has 70 heart contractions per minute. And the third type is smooth muscle. And smooth muscle is spindle shaped, which means it tends to have like pointiness on each end and then a central kind of nucleus. Now, a smooth muscle is usually in the walls of the hollow organs, where it's usually two layers that are perpendicular to it, and it's also in the walls of blood vessels. And the walls of blood vessels is going to go around in circles when it contracts to make the blood vessels smaller. And hollow organs, we still have it where it goes around to contract it this way, but we also have it going perpendicular. So when it contracts, it's moving food or whatever it is along the pathway, maybe. It is a sperm, it's moving along its pathway because, yeah, that's the muscle and those organs as well. Um, so, this type of muscle has a very slow, long contraction because if you think about the lady's uterus, when she is giving birth, in order to push the baby out at the very end, you are having contractions every two minutes when you are pushing. And when I say contractions every two minutes, I don't mean it's like, oh, contract and relax. I mean that contraction lasts for 90 seconds and then you have a 30 second rest. Okay, so all of you big muscle kinesiology people out there, you try lifting weights where you are lifting nonstop for 90 seconds and then have a 30 second stop and keep on doing that. And you do that for two hours because that's what happens, ladies, when you are pushing that baby out. It's called labor for a reason. It's work, folks. All right. So as I said, it's often two layers. So when you see smooth muscle, you will often see one layer where it's cut longitudinally where you can see it, and then the other layer is cut in cross section where you can see where it looks totally different. That's it for muscle. Ooh, only three slides. Now we're going to move on to our third type of tissue, which is nervous tissue. And ladies and gentlemen, this is one slide. So aren't you happy? Notice it's called nervous tissue. Nervous tissue is not the same thing as nerves. So don't write nerves for a type of tissue because they'll be marked wrong. And nervous tissue is specialized to communicate with, with itself and with other types of tissue by either voltages or chemical signals. 
And this is a picture of the spinal cord in cross section here, just for me to remind you that nervous tissue is not only in the brain, it's also found in the spinal cord. And so here is what it looks histologically. Do you see that big pink cell there? That big pink cell is the neuron, what you may have called a nerve cell before, but now you're going to call it a neuron. And this is the one that's going to be receiving the information and sending the information out. And so there aren't subtypes. So we're going to learn a little bit of the anatomy of the neuron. We're going to learn the three main parts. So we have our nucleus sitting here in the main part of the neuron, which is called the cell body. Then we have all of these tapered processes, and they're actually bringing information in towards the cell body. And there could be a thousand of these, okay? So there's only like a half a dozen on this picture, but there could be a thousand of these. And so these are each known as a dendrite. So we have many incoming messages to a neuron, but we only have one pathway out. And the one pathway out is through a structure known as an axon. All right, so that's it for neurons. So if you're looking at this, you're thinking, oh, this is great. That's all we have to know about nervous tissues. There are neurons. And then like we've got some other little fibers or whatever. And I don't know what these other things are. But so my question to you is, are there more neurons or more of these other black dots, which you might think was just dirt on the slide? And the answer is, there's more of these black dots. Well, guess what? All of those black dots are cells. So there are more of the other kind of cells than there are of neurons in nervous tissue. And the other type of cells, there are a bunch of different types of them. We don't have to learn the types. We're just going to learn the word, which means encompasses all of the cells related to nervous tissue that are not neurons and collectively these are known as neuroglial cells or neuroglia and so there's cartoon drawings of four types right here you don't have to learn those when we come back in the nervous system we're going to learn about all six and what the functions of all six are but for now the neuron is the one getting the messages sending out the messages and the neuroglial cells each one has a specific yeah, but here's the bottom line. If we didn't have neuroglial cells, the neurons would die. It's that simple. And with that, we're done with this lecture, and I will see you again shortly as we move on to the exciting world of epithelial tissue. Hope you're having a great day.